Hello, my name is Benji and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today we go back to Marvel Champions, the card game, and the soon to be released Scarlet Witch expansion pack. We'll be looking at each of the signature cards in the box and assessing what sort of identity this witch is going to be. And so wonder, what do you have up your sleeve on your alter e Hold on, wait a minute. Has it really come to this FFG? Your creative keg has run this dry? This is all too similar to her super-powered sibling Pietro's alter ego side. No, actually, it's the Donald Duck insane. I don't know how I feel about this. Is this the beginning of the end of Marvel Champions? Seriously. Okay, hyperbole and teasing aside, I'll repeat what I said during my review of Quicksilver. I like card filtering. I would prefer it to be draw to, discard to, but I'm not going to say it's not a neat ability. Get Pietro in play however, and it's happy camper time. Six cards in hand is what you'd expect, and ten health rules in comparison. Double digits baby. Her hero side though does bring something a little new. Her basic powers of 2, 1, 2 are pretty meh and uninspiring. The hand size of 5 is middle of the road. However, you cannot say that her interruptibility is not flavourful. But is it that good? Well, kinda. I love consistency and this ability does a good job of evening out the volatile nature of boost icons. The problem is that A, sometimes it will go unused and B, What's the sweet spot? Are you automatically going to dismiss two boost cards? Yes, the odds are probably higher than 50% of a better outcome, but you're also one more card away from an acceleration token when the encounter deck depletes. In summary then, I'm hoping for big things from her signature cards, because so far I'm lukewarm on what I'm seeing. Scarlet's first signature card her ally is, as you'd expect, Brosif Quicksilver, and he's also exactly the card I expected. A par for the course stat line for a four cost ally, but like his hero counterpart, everything's just plain sped up. There is good in this. Having access to optional and scalable damage can really help getting that key bit of damage to level up a villain or to down a minion. I think that part could easily be underestimated, and so for that reason, I'm excited to get this to the table. It's also worth noting that the ready ability ain't ever being used in the villain phase, and also, and this is a very minor thing, but Artsari is going to be on and off the ball before you can blink, and so using the aforementioned alter ego ability and the team up card, Order and Chaos, will be even trickier. Next up is Chaos Magic, aka Giggity Giggity. I love economy in the card gaming space, so this cheap card is a beautiful thing. Again, assessing the pace of the game and how quickly that encounter deck is depleting is going to be a thing playing Scarlet Witch. Not only that, because this is a one of it's not like you can go all in with it and have a high resource curve. And what it doesn't say on the card when you take a step back and think about it is that the card you play does have a net cost of one because you're obviously losing two cards from your hand. Still, this is a short term tempo queen of a card. On to Hexbolt, and clearly somehow or somewhere our femme fatale does not give a tip any about depleting that encounter deck. But playing with fire aside, this looks pretty tasty. Let's just throw out a likely scenario. For two resources, you could dish out two damage, remove two threat, and draw a card. That amount of value shouldn't be sniffed at. Still, it's the opposite of her hero ability, in that you're completely in the lap of the gods to what's going to happen. Hmm, maybe someone should do a statistical analysis of the likely outcomes. Yeah, someone. Three copies of Molecular Decay closes the book on what Wanda's preferred game plan is. Do it, and do it quickly. Still, an average of let's say 8 damage for 3 cost isn't exactly unheard of. 
so the downside is even more prevalent. Well, reality, on the other hand, has a predictable downside that I can live with. Completely nullifying an encounter card for just one resource is great. But the worry is, you're not in the business of holding onto cards turn after turn in Marvel Champions. So you actually need to be lucky when it's in hand in the villain phase. And lucky again to be unlucky to draw a particularly crippling encounter card. Agatha Harkness is a welcome support card like most of these alter ego side card drawing abilities. Agatha sacrifices peeking at more cards for the ability to choose any of those found and add it to your hand. What else can you say? Sure, fine. How much time will you spend in alter ego form will determine this card's quality and so far Scarlet feels like a kill quick type of gal. And just to reinforce that hunch, Magic Shield comes to save the day. Great card, one resource for the ability, not just for you but for a pal of mine if it's needed to soak up 3 damage. Seems about worth another turn in hero form. 3 copies of this mean that we'll see a decent amount of play. And finally to round out the signature cards, we have Scarlet Witch's Crest. A sublime card that you're really going to want to mull heavily for. This multifunctional card makes your good things gooder and your stopping bad things gooder too. Man Bench, you really nailed that sentence. I know, thanks you. Don't get me wrong, I wish there was a way to ready this and use it more than once a turn. But so long as you know what you're up against and you use this wisely, this will pay itself back and then some in benefits. So every Marvel Champion identity to date has had one obligation to contend with. Scarlet Switch wants none of that. She has to have two copies of Slip Insanity. And they're winding their way into the encounter deck and that kinda sucks. The exhaust option is par for the course, but Wanda can ill afford a lack of tempo and the other option feels like a double whammy. The shortcut to an acceleration token and the scheming. Man, this card of a two of is on my naughty list. To save on cardboard though, she does only have four cards in her nemesis deck. Ah, sweet mercies. The side scheme next evolution leaves me begging for respite from all this boost icon shenanigans. I honestly feel like this novel idea has been absolutely rinsed at this point and needs dealing with by the way as these boosts will add up quickly. Scarlet Witch's arch nemesis Luminous is an absolute beast as well. Two scheme and attack and five health is bad enough. But you might well be drawing an extra encounter card as well. This is one of the toughest minions I would ever like to meet in a dark alley. I don't know about Luminous, this whole Wonder Witch endeavour is feeling more ominous than anything else. That's okay though, because the last two Nemesis cards are going to be a piece of cake to deal with. And Magical Suspension says I have to lose all my tempo. What, not even a smidgen? No, all the tempo. Just look at how pissed off she is in the card image. And so as to not break the trend, Chaos Manipulation fetches the oh so easy to deal with Luminous and quite possibly activates against you immediately. Nice. So there you have it, the cards that make Scarlet Witch Scarlet Witch. And you know what? I'm left somewhat unimpressed. There's flavour here that's for sure, even if it is one flavour to rule them all. I'm worried though, there is such a thing as holding your hand to the fire too long. And this is what concerns me, is that she becomes the add one extra threat to the main scheme identity. Which to be fair, will turn her into a pseudo expert mode in solo. I suppose what I'm saying is her signature cards would should be of a power level slightly higher than your average bear. And they're not. But hey, these cards are new and I may be way off with my assessment. 
I'd much rather get her to the table and see what's what than start excessively theory crafting this on paper. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.